So networking is in, in cloud actually talks about the path you take or you pass through the path you create, a virtual path you create to connect your resources, or that you are the also a virtual path that you also create for other people to have access to your resources, especially compute resources. That is networking. So AWS have their own, they call it virtual private cloud. Virtual private cloud for AWS, other public cloud can some of them call it virtual private network. Then people call it most most people, most uh, cloud infrastructure, either they call it VPC, which is virtual private cloud, or they call it VPN, which is virtual private network. But both of them are the same thing. So a virtual private cloud is like they are telling you this is the only way you can connect to your private resources. For example, this is a, this are these are resources for everybody. But immediately you start using these resources, you can make it private that only you can have access to it. But you need to create a path to that network, to that resources, so that when you are connecting to it, nobody is connecting through that resources except those you give access to. You understand me? So when you are doing that, you are you are connected to your private network. So that process of creating that path eh, is networking in cloud. So having said that, one of the most popular, we have also mentioned the word VPC. So now what is VPC? A VPC is like, it's like, um, should I say it's like a, a, a camouflage of a real physical network system that carries everything it takes that you can use to connect to your resources. Please, a minute. Please, a minute, just give me a minute. So that, that, that's, that's what a VPC actually is. So for example, Mr. as I mentioned, I, I think I've explained it to a layman language. I don't know, but if you, if you have any question, just say it. I'm just trying to bring it down because if we can understand what a VPC is, it will be easy for us to really understand what IAS is. Do you have any question about the VPC? Something you do not get cleared about, just, just say it. Before we go to practice. And, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Grace, hope your system is up. Madam uh, Grace, hope your your AWS is up, Abby. Can somebody help me to ask her? Patrick, please, I will be right back. Let me just have a few minutes to set to the piece. How many minutes, please? I'll, I'll let you know once I'm ready. Okay. okay. So we are waiting for you. Okay, set up on time. So if we do not practice today, just know that it's her. Please, everybody know that it's her because we are here to practice. Okay. Now let's continue before let's wait for her for the next five minutes, perhaps or 15 minutes. Okay, now this is a VPC. Assuming I have, I want to put my server hmm, in maybe in three zone, A, zone B, zone C. Thank God. So I know some of you really watched the video I shared yesterday. So what you are expected to do is to make your VPC to cover that zone that you want to put your server. And when you do that, what happens is that you can connect to those servers. Now, let's also say something about this VPC. I know some of us have had I've seen the word VPC before, but let's talk about let's also talk about VPC. Okay, now let's this is a VPC. 
Okay, now you've gotten AWS access. You have created a VPC, which is a private cloud, uh, private cloud, uh, private virtual private cloud, which is also VPC, virtual private network. Now you can connect to your resources virtually. Because the virtual private cloud is very big, is a ve is very big, because most times it can cover a whole region. I Meaning, if you create one virtual private cloud in AWS, it covers a whole region. Meaning, if this, this, this are in one region, assuming this, this three are in one region, maybe they are in Africa, Africa as a region, what we do, that virtual private cloud can cover all the resources in that region. But if you go to another region, that private cloud will not be available. You have to create another virtual private cloud for each region. So which means, if that virtual private cloud is very big, meaning it will be difficult for you to access all your resources. So that is why, because that network is very big, you are going to divide your virtual, virtual private card, cloud into a mini private cloud, also known as subnet. So this subnet, this is your private cloud, which is your VPC. This subnet, which is also known as, it's, a, it's, it's what we call sub, subnet, it actually means subnetwork. You understand me? Meaning a chunk of that network. What what does what what the subnet allow you to do? A subnet will be shared. Each, each you know, I told you we have a region that carries the whole data that carry the whole private cloud. A subnet is supposed to be a traffic or a network way to connect to each availability zone. Don't forget, a region co contains so many availability zone. Abi. An availability zone has so many fault zone or fault domain. You understand? So what, what I'm trying to say is that for you to connect to a region, you must have a private network that covers that region. Now, if you have a virtual private cloud that covers that region, that, that virtual private cloud is always divided per availability zone, AZ, AZ. So that means if I have all year, one, two, three, they are in Africa, Assuming this one is in AZ1, AZ2, and AZ3, and all of them are in one region, say US West 1. So what does that do? What, for you to connect to each of these regions, you must put a subnet, a menu of subnet, which is going to be a portion of your virtual private cloud and assign it to each of these zones each of this uh, zone, we'll call it zone. So you're going to be having one private cloud and three subnets. One private cloud, which is virtual private cloud and three subnets. So each of these subnets will be entitled Will be, de will be dedicated to which or each of these availability zones. But does that mean that one availability zone cannot carry more than one subnet? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. One availability zone can carry more than one subnet. You can have four subnets in one availability zone, as many subnets you want to have. But the truth is that the subnets that you put in this zone cannot access the resources in this zone. So if you want to access the resources in this zone, you must put a subnet to that zone. You must put a subnet to this zone. So this, have, this, this is another advantage of having the subnet. Assuming this zone, we have one server, maybe we have a server here. And we have another server here. Or we plan to put one server here. We plan, let's say we want to, we plan to put another server here. Eh? Okay, we say, okay, we want this server to be having the same application. Why are we putting this server in this three zone? Remember, this is a zone A, zone two, zone three. Let's assume that this one is in Nigeria. This is a Nigeria data center. This data center is in South Africa. Why this data center is in Kenya? But all of them are in Africa zone, Africa region. So what does that mean? If I have three server here, and these three servers are tied together. 
So in case one of these server, maybe there's a disaster happens to this server, this server can still serve the traffic. You understand me? In case the, 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 this server also goes off, this server can serve the traffic. So what do you do? You not, you not attach one networking um, resources called load balancer. You will not attach one networking resources called a load balancer. The lo let's assume this is the, okay. You will not attach a resources called a load balancer. Yeah, I know this is one. Okay, one, two, three. These are three load balancers. In this three load balancer, what do you do? You just, I'm just trying to illustrate something. So what happened is this. See this load balancer that is also a networking, it's also a networking uh, features that AWS also provide. Uh, time will not permit me. I, will not, I would have loved to display, explain more about this load balancer, but we are going to do load balancer on its own. So what does a load balancer do? A load balancer can be can be shared within. Don't, don't don't please don't. It's not like every zone we have just one service. Once you can have a load balancer to three servers in one zone, but most times a load balancer also is also like a virtual private network that covers a whole region. So when you have a load balancer, it can cover the whole region. So which means when somebody want to, I'm building something. Okay, now this is people connected to the server. Let's assume that this, this part talks about people accessing the, the work, maybe the application inside. So when this one goes off, the load balancer will automatically call this one off and start transferring file and application from here. When this one goes off, it will still remain one. So what does that mean? It means that the application will be very available. You understand me? And the SLO is going to be very high. So what will enable you to share this load balancer across this is because you have a network tied to it. If you don't have a if you don't have a network tied to this zone, if all your network is in if all your network is in this, you cannot use these resources. You understand me? So for you to be able to use a cloud based resources, you must be able to connect to that cloud base. And for you to be able to connect to that cloud base, you must create a network platform to that cloud base. It's like you have a house in the bush and that house you want to start building inside. You must first of all create a path to those houses. So that act of creating a path to your resources in the AWS cloud infrastructure is called networking. It's called virtual networking. And that virtual networking is called VPC. And that VPC covers a region. And that region, for you to be able to access each of the data center or each of the availability zone, AZ, you must have a network tied to it. And the process of defining that big network so that it can access each of those zones is called subnet. The subnet is a portion of the complete network. So with this illustration, we can now go and talk about VPC. Any question? Any yeah, question? Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, what, what do you mean by SLO, please? Okay, SLO is a part of SROE uh, terminology. SROE means site reliability engineering. It means the 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 agreement. I asked for I asked for SLO. You are you then yes. the SRE. So you were too fast about the SRE too. <laughs> am, I, am I am I speaking, guys? Relax. SLO <laughs> means confuse me now. service mm. level agreement. Yeah, I know about her. I thought I thought um, it's a, it's a different thing uh, in uh, AWS. So what it's is SRE mean. now? SRE means site reliability engineering. Which means the law that you the, the agreement you make you made with your user or with your third party that this system will be available. 
You understand me? You can say, okay, I want to tell you, this is my application. Whenever you use it, it's going to be available all through the year. And you are only going to have 20 minute downtime or 10 minute downtime in a year. It's measured in seven, in, in sevens, in nines. We have two nine, we have one nine, we have two nine, we have three nines, we have four nines, we have seven nines. What I mean by 99.999, 99.995, you understand? All those ones are, 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 are availability of your resources, of your infrastructure. If you are building a data center, a physical data center, that is how they rate your tier of your data center. One, you say, okay, this is my infrastructure, this house I've built. If you put your server in this house, which is the data center, this server is going to be available with this SLO, which means if it goes below this, for example, within a year, if you have a downtime for more than 20 minutes, sue us, unless there's a disaster. And the disaster, it also have its own clause. Yes, the disaster will be defined. You understand me? Maybe even COVID-19, when we were having COVID-19, those of us that were working in data center then, those of us that were working in all that different infrastructure, we still be available to make sure that that infrastructure is up. Even during the war, when there is war everywhere, sometimes you can still be available. During election, you'll be available. That's why if you are working in, in a cloud-based infrastructure, you are expected to work 247. Because you need to meet that agreement that you have said you have said for your customer that this infrastructure is going to be available. Same with application. You understand me? I know Nigerians sometimes we don't even care. But even at that, we still have a regulatory body that come to check and validate that SLO. It's called NCC, National Communication Commission. They will be on your neck. They can shut down your infrastructure if you don't provide that SLO. So an SLA, we have SLO, we have SLA, we have um, we have um, service level objective, service level, service level agreement, and and other uh, projection. You the way you because there's one that you give to your client. There's one that you have to tell your team that ah, we have given them ninety nine point nine with that the data set that will not go down in twenty minutes. But we as a team. Well, let's ensure that this data center does not go down in 10 minutes. So that is your, going to be your own SLO, which is your objective. But the SLO is what you give to your client. I'm talking about in site reliability engineering, which we are going to be discussing much more later. So for you to make sure that you're, for that to, to, have, to happen, you have to have a double power system so that when one power goes down, the other power takes over. You have to make sure that your, that your server are not just in one area. You understand me? You can have your server in four areas so that in case there's a disaster in one, you'll have to take over. You understand? If you are, if your application is an heavy lifting application, for like, example, like this Zoom we are using now, is a very heavy lifting. If they have it in one zone and there's latency, all of us will have a bad experience, which is going to also reflect in Zoom. And let me tell you the truth, Zoom is not the only powerful public cloud uh, uh, communication channel right now. We have we have Google Meet, we have Team, but why are we using Zoom? Maybe because Zoom rescued us when we are in uh, COVID-19 and all that stuff. But if they, if we are having a bad experience, we can switch, which they don't want. You know what I mean? So they will have to make sure that they meet up to that availability. So that process of telling the people that this application or this infrastructure will be available in such so time, that agreement that you're making is called SLO, SLA, you understand me? So I think I've explained that. Any yeah, quick one, yeah I think I think you just you just uh, clarify it is it's it should be it should be XLA not SLO that was what made me got me confused. SLO, <laughs> SLO is the objective between your team. Okay. They are all the same thing. Just that one, the <coughs> SLO is for your team. All of us working okay. here now. This is our agreement. Yeah. This is our objective. Yeah. yeah. For SLA, like the agenda we have. Okay. SLA is what you give to your clients. Yeah, I know about that. Okay, thank you Both so much. Both of them Thanks. are the same. Just that one is for you, one is for client. Okay, you know thanks. And if you can meet up your SLO, there's going to be high tendency that you already meet up your SLO. You understand me? So please, okay. I will discuss more about that. 
that's experience wise. I know Adi is part of me now. Adi, she? <laughs> <laughs> That, that one is not a, is not an issue for me anyway. <laughs> so uh, let me go to my own question. Okay. This uh, subnet, when you create it, and one let's say one server cluster, what server your clusters, your numbers goes down, for you to be able to access from the other servers or from the other region, do you create a subnet? that is available that you can that it, that will make you to be able to access information from the other Sorry. servers servers okay before you even put server at all you have to set up a network it's not like you set up server before you set up your network no no what i mean is let's say everything is even set up mm -hmm. they are working but the failover is that when one fails, let's say the AZ1 fails, and you're transferring information to the AZ2, you are balancing the load so that your traffic moves to the AZ2 or AZ3. Now, because you said your subnet is your sub the subnet group is particular to one region or one subsector. So those subnets. If you don't have subnet created for those the other subsectors, you will not be able to access information from them, yes. right? Yeah. Now, that's when I'm you fail over, okay. when you are setting it up, do you now set up a subnet that lets you access, that lets you share information across those uh, groups? Yes. Yes. Let me. Let me. I believe what you're trying to say is that if one server goes down and you already mm -hmm. have server running, are you getting me? How would you be yeah. able to access those resources if you do not set up a subnet for those yes. resources? The question is that, the answer is that you will never have any resources because if you don't set up a subnet, you will not be even be able to even create resources in any, any of this zone. So it's like it's like a dependency, right? That uh, if, if it doesn't happen, if that uh, subnet does not happen, you can't create um, the server. Yes. Okay. Before you create the server, you must set up your network. Don't forget our lab yesterday. We show, I showed you a IES, right? Well, if you look at the beginning, you see what is on the front, what's on the top is what? Network. Without this network, both installing, doing your compute, okay, compute comes first, Abby, before iOS, you know, before your operating system. Without, without your network, and all these things will not happen. You have to first of all set up your network first. After setting up your network, then you cannot start thinking about putting your server or launching your server. We are going to try, we are going to, we are going to practice it when uh, Bimbo, uh, Color Day is ready for us. So um, I noticed that sometimes we can have an underdog people that are learning, maybe we we'll learn later, but that is not the character we want to build here. We want everybody here to be able to pick and lead the class. You understand? So I want to use the OEWS for this. I also want to teach her to set up and how to destroy it. And everybody is going to follow through. So after, please, everybody build your system. I'm going to call you, I'm call, going to call Nest. So now, what you first of all do, you first of all set up your virtual private network. Then if you know you are going to put your server in this region, you have to set up a subnet for the region. Then after you do that, before you now start putting your server in this, actually server, this server you are seeing here is going to be inside this subnet. You understand me? All this server you are seeing here is going to be inside your subnet. So the load balancer is after you have set up your subnet, let's assume this is server one, S, S, let's call it server two. You understand me? Let's call this server two. So the AZ, so this, these are servers, these are servers. Let's call it server one. Let's call this server two. Don't forget what a server is. A server is just a normal laptop or a normal computer 
that you use to send information to people that people can log in and just use it as if and and collect their, their, their application and use it as if it belongs to them or the system it belongs to them that's a work a server the difference between a server and your local laptop is that your local laptop is for you only is anything you are sending there you have to log into your laptop and use but a server people can connect to your resources via the network you understand me so Tonkobo has a hand raised up okay um, I think that I think that clarifies the issue. So as we go deeper, you're going to understand. So as you create your private network, you must create your subnet. Inside your subnet, that's where you now start creating your servers. So you can have five servers in one subnet. You can now, it's not the best practice to have five servers in one place. You understand? So it's always advisable to put servers in different subnets. You understand? It's the same money. Now, this is one of the advantage of public cloud over a private cloud. What I mean by private cloud, I mean a company that have their own data center. A public cloud means a, a, a company that uses people's data center like the AWS that we are using now. So the advantage is that, you know, it's going to be difficult for you to wake up one morning and say, I want to get a server in US. I want to get another server in Canada. I want to get another server in South Africa. It's going to take so many logistics, so many uh, uh, capital expenditure, operation expenditure, you're going to analyze all your projects. You're going to start looking for how to connect, how to take your, buy your server and move there and start connecting your networking and making sure that you, you have your virtual, uh, your, 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 your VM, which is a virtual machine on it. But with the help of a data set, with the help of a public cloud, you don't need to think of those things. Just log into your AWS, just spin up any server, any region, and the server will be in that region. It's not like they are camouflaging you. It's real. Any region you pick is actually the region where that server is. So meaning I can just wake up one morning and have 20 servers in different in all, all over the world and make sure my application is served all over the world from the comfort of my home. You see, without thinking about all those logistics. So that's one of the powerful things about public cloud. It's scalable, it's highly available, and and it's also very, very, very um, flexible, you understand me, and elastic. So, um, Tokumba, please answer a question. Let's move. Okay. Um, so, it's basically um, two questions. One, um, what you described, how is this not, um, um, from my understanding, I assume this was. Um, a network administrator's work. So we're doing, we're, it's part of what a DevOps does. Then secondly, um, so I'm trying to relate with it. So let's say, for example, I get into, so that it comes down home for something. So let's say I get a job now as a DevOps. And does that mean that, is it that part of my job description is they're going to tell me to, build up server um and a sub i should build up a network in different regions or what uh, maybe what i'm trying to say is so give an example of what i know what you want to say uh, let me just say uh, okay <laughs> okay Sorry. Uh, i'll need to just tell you the truth a work of a developer engineer cut across everything as a matter of fact the work the one of the reasons why developer engineer is highly paid is because the rule of four people is actually done by just one person. So for my in my team, we only have two DevOps engineers. We do infrastructure, security, migration, deployment, development support. So that's why you see the kind of series of labs and the kind of series of certification I'll be asking you guys to do is to prepare you for this because you are going to be doing it as a DevOps engineer. You are going to set up infrastructure. You are going to ensure all those things. But it's, it may look big plenty now, but when you have actually started doing it, it's simple. You understand me? So not like, are you a network? Very soon, those people working in network are people that are working physical uh, networking. Maybe you are just working in physical office or maybe you are now working with AWS, you're part of the people that are setting up their data center, you'll be networking. But when it comes to cloud, 
if you have networking experience, it's also good, but it is not enough. If you don't have networking experience, there's no way you can ever perform the DevOps role. Because how will you set up a server when you cannot set up the VPC? So there's, this is the most, that's why I told you yesterday, from that yesterday onward, don't miss any lab, please. Because I wouldn't be talking about the core strength. In fact, this is part of the part, one of the things I believe that is giving our, our student job. So this part, some people don't like it, but it's very, very easy. And whenever you, if you're able to pass networking interview in DevOps, you are already close to getting the job. You understand me? So don't be afraid, it's simple. Just we have to explain it. Is there anything hard that you cannot understand? It? There's nothing hard here. Just put your mind at rest. The meat of networking is hard, networking is hard. Remove it from your mind. In fact, right now, burn it, destroy it, and just wave it off, you understand? It's not hard at all. It's not hard at all. Uh, Patrick. I, I want to appreciate you for for that video you sent yesterday, right? It's 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 actually set a, a major part, especially for me. You know, um, I've always been saying it. I've not been taking this so serious, right? But the last two two weeks, I felt okay. But that video yesterday clarifies so many things. Uh, I mean, now that you're talking about VPC <clears throat> subnet, I, is it, I also want to say same for me. Believe in me, it, that so, video. Was, I mean, I'm able to huge. I'm able to connect to say, okay, VPC. You know, I, I tried to create a, I tried to create after watching the video yesterday, <clears throat> I created a server. I mean, an instance, right? But along the line, it was asking me some questions, and I felt, oh, I have not gotten to that level. Now that you started talking about the VPC, the subnet, it's it makes it so so easy. And you know, when you now talked about this thing is simple. You don't know the, the body you took from my, from my mind again. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks. Well, that is one of the advantage of us being here. And God have given us this grace that anybody that passed through my lab successfully with the mind, when you are going for interview, the kind of confidence you have, the way you talk, even if you are not from IT background, like the, those NSC one, two, three you did, when you start talking, they will want to listen to you because you are cooked. Three months is not your three months. It's a crash course. And God has been helping us. That's why I'm begging all of you, take it seriously. And I thank you for beginning to take it seriously. And those that have been taking it seriously before, thank you. Those that want to start taking it seriously now, thank you too. All that day I'm waiting for you. Grace, you must get this DevOps job. Bro. You must hammer. You don't get choice. I did here for you. I'm waiting for you, please. Are you ready for us? Yes, I'm ready. Beautiful. So just give me like one minute. Let me round up this. So this is the process. What we are going to do now, we're going to create a VPC. I want to create a subnet. I want to create, inside the subnet, there's also another one called route table. A route table is the way route, you know, meaning of route means the path. That's the word route is. You understand? Route means path. It's like you are driving. You say, okay, if you are going to my Patrick house, by the time you get to, or do, the first of all, do you know Nigeria? You say, yes. Okay. Do you know Lagos? You say, yes. I'm already creating a networking, networking VPC in Nigeria, Lagos, which is the, the subnet. Do you know Lagos? You say, yes. Okay. Do you know uh, Ojota or Gudurud? Now I'm now narrowing it through a path. You understand? You say, ah, I know that place. Okay. When you get to Ogudu, now you have to go through Ogra, Ogunijaro. Automatically, oh, you understand? It becomes so easy. Like, okay. That process of creating a route that goes to my house and who to enter, who not to enter, but you are going to have a gate. You're going to see a security man at the Ogra gate before you even get to my place. You understand me? Who we enter, who we not enter, that routing is called route table in AWS. It's like creating who we now have access, who we don't have access, how we they have access. You understand me? That routing is called route table. 
So it's inside the subject that you define that. For, for the VPC, you is from the VPC, you also define will this uh, network will it be accessible by every party? Or I want it to be for only the people that works with me that have access to my network. If from the VPC, you define it to either be a public or private. That's why you attach an internet gate. You know, gate. Now, we all remember the meaning of gate. Now, gate means something that opens and closes. Abby. So, internet. Internet means public. You understand? So, if you have an internet gateway attached to your private VPC, it means that that VPC have a tendency of having a public or a private net subnet. So inside that subnet, you will not attach any subnet you attach internet gateway to. It's already a public subnet. But if you don't attach a public uh, internet gateway to that subnet, it's still a private subnet, which means nobody can enter that resources outside that network that you created. So these are the things we're going to be going. Now let's move. Let's let's start our engine and let's move. So please share your screen, please. Let's do something. So can I ask a question? Go ahead. So what is the purpose of creating a subnet when you are not going to make it public? Beautiful. Oh, God bless you. Now, the word public is, is not risky for you. See, this thing is not public. It's risky. Uh -huh. So if you are creating an application that is going to be public, you have to also create processes to ensure that the public, especially those hackers that you learned about in your last class, do have access to your server or else they will destroy it. Abi? Yes. Good. So that is where most resources are in private network. But there's a way that resources that is your private network can also connect to the internet, but the internet cannot have a direct access to it. We call it network access translator, NAT, NAT gateway. So it will translate public, but private will not, it will go to the public and collect updates, you know, to, to update server. So that we'll be using your yes. system. So you just go to the internet and update. But when it is updating, mm -hmm. But when people want to connect to it through the internet, they will not be able to connect through to it. That process of okay. blocking that internet network from entering it is called, there's a translator. It's called network okay. access translator. It helps you to block it. So you attach it to your private network. But there are sometimes you want to connect to your, to your VM. You cannot connect to it directly because it's pub public. So what you do, you make one of your server public so from that, your server that is public, you can connect to it. Then from that, since you're already inside that public network, you see your friends in Nigeria. They are, they are just telling me that I'm still in Nigeria. Let me close my stuff. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, please, can you help me on your phone? Hello, are you there? Hello, come on, the day I know how to... Please, sweet. This meeting is being recorded. So sorry, your friends, uh, PACN, they just announced to me that I'm coming here, so pardon me. I'm going to use it. I can't get in butter now. I'm like a big boy. Um, I'm getting butter now. My fiber is still connected to Nepal. Uh, I will get it, sir. <laughs> But please tell your people that globally, those of us in Canada now, if you don't understand, they go, sir, they go, sir, Alice, uh, Toby is in you, uh, no, uh, you, uh, this thing, South Africa, uh, all of them, you guys will know that all we are, we are still here, okay? so I'm so sorry, eh? but we are back, eh? we are back. <laughs> so, spend this no, money, spend this money and go and buy butter. Go and buy, go and buy butter. Yeah, rich. So you see, to my life, say so I'm enjoying this. Do do so. <laughs> you that just got a very big job, like my first salary is going to Patrick. My Patrick, I will not just buy it. I'll buy. I'll buy transformer. 
when the when the Patrick, Patrick, Patrick became, you don't uh, become make, church. Make it, you don't become church day. pastor. <laughs> when they, when they, did become yeah, they donate their full salary to you. Uh, when did they become Mekisedek? <laughs> <laughs> you don't make pledge. Sorry, you not God, money. You not can I go give him more? Uh, but I <laughs> will get an inviter soon. Okay, okay, let's move in. The time is fast. Uh, please share your screen, please. Come on, Ade. Is she, has she left? No, she's still here. Go on, please. Grace, share your screen. Yeah, you, you, have, you have to enable me to share my screen. Beautiful. So after that, the next person that will share our screen is Alice. They get ready. After Alice, Elizabeth gets ready. Then after Elizabeth, the next person is Adeni Ron, get ready, and followed by Ajagbe, get ready, Festus, get ready, everybody get ready, as I've just called your name now. Go ahead, share your screen, please. Okay, beautiful. So log into your AWS account. Okay. Is your screen on? Yes, I can see your screen. Via your IAM, good. Yes, we can see your screen. Go to service. Yes. Under services. Okay, under services, go to, you can even type VPC on top there. You just see it there. Type VPC under that search, but it's under network. VPC. Click it. Everybody do the same. Please try and read the documentation of this VPC. Please do. Click create VPC. You can see under this VPC, you can see all the VPC. Normally, when you have AWS accounts, they will, there's, wait, wait. There's always a default VPC that comes with it. Yes, I'm so that in case you just want to try something, you can try it. But I don't want us to use that VPC now because that VPC is already, already organized down. Everything has been set. So if we use it, you may not know what is inside that VPC. Now, I want you to create your own VPC. Mm -hmm. Okay, scroll down. This is, this is they just upgraded their site to. This is new. This is new UI. Now, in a VPC, there's a, a, a insider note. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. They just That's up. I mean, up. Up, 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 screw up, screw up. Now, if first of all, tell you which type of VPC, do you want to just create only VPC or you want to create more? You say create VPC and more, scroll down, or you can just click only that create, create only, VPC only. If you are creating VPC only, you say you should name it. So give it a name, call it, um, a uh, K K K K network or K VPC or G VPC. No, K means you know now. Please, uh, okay, good. You can use a lower case. 
Or you can use Dutch, but you just say K. Okay, so at the at the naming as uh, case sensitive. Naming is not really case sensitive, but there are some characters that the naming cannot correct collect, like hash. But you can take dash. You can take upper link. You can take hyphen. Understand? But you don't. If you, if you can, but don't leave space. You can say G space VPC. You know what? You tell me that sometimes what the best way to name it. You see that you say G dash VPC. V, uh, you know, dash now, like you know, my IF, there's a G, G, something like to know the difference. Yes, yes, beautiful. So, VG means grace. You can use anybody, you can use this stuff now. Scroll down, you can see it's a IPv4 cider or IPAM allocated IPv4. Now, let me, let me explain the word IPv for you. The word IPv means Ethernet protocol version four, that's IPv4. So when the people were this internet, the people that the network, the network engineers, the network specialists, when they were designing uh, this, how to connect from one system to the other, they design a system that has a way, a rule, a law that binds the transmission of file from one place to the other. That law that binds your file to make sure that, that your file that you are sending gets to your own direction, your own destination. You understand me? That law that binds that transfer of file from one place to the other is called protocol. You understand me? We already know the meaning of what protocol. I say special, except some of us that are using it for ladies. To me, I like that protocol. No, that, that's, not, that's not the protocol I'm talking about. The protocol I'm talking about is the law that guides the cohesion. You know what I mean? What I mean by the seamless transfer of file from the one place to the other. So that when I'm transferring my file, my file is guided to my destination. It's not clashing with your own. So I have to set up some rules to ensure that my file goes to my direction. So that process of sending that line, that law, that rules that binds my own file, is called protocol. So internet protocol, that means IP. So it has so many versions. You have version one, version two, version three, and version four, which is still mostly in use. Now we have version five. Version five was not, was not really, really 100% uh, mastered. But version six is what people are moving towards. So you can hear of IPv4, and IPv6. In IPv4, there's a way they design it. It's in an octet format, meaning in two rest of our eight, that's octet, a binary. So all right, I'm going to send you a documentation. You guys are going to dig that. Just know it for knowing sake. You understand me? So that when you are allocating IP address, I, I, that's what people call it, IP address to your server. You will know what you're actually doing. You understand me? So just try, I'll send you a documentation. And there is a certification class coming up soon. I'm, I'm also going to be participating in that certification class. It's a professional certification class called Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Certification. It's free, but it's, it's very robust. But my dear, it's also very, very tasky. But if you can do it, I would recommend you come along. You can set up a group for that. You understand me? It's free. Don't worry. You just have fun and just do it together and pass it. So that from there, you can learn more about this thing. But I'm still going to send you a documentation that talk about IP so that you won't be like, hey, these people have come again. Oh, they have come with their coding again. Oh, there's no coding there. It's just a law. We are not the one that said the law. There's a body that sets the law. We are just understanding how this body works. So when that's what you see, CIDA. CIDA is the, the way they design this, the way these numbers are arranged. It's called CIDA notation. There's a full name for the word CIDA notation. I will send it to you too. So when you hear IPv4, you're talking about IPv4. IP means Internet Protocol version 4. You understand? 
So that I just want to get that cleared off the way. I want to be talking about more of that. So now you have given the name of your IP. Now you're going to give it an IPv4. Now that IPv4 in AWS is going to be in four digits, four format, 0.0.0, .0 forward slash. We have 32, we have 24, we have 16. I will explain to you in the documentation I'm going to share. So the longer, the smaller the number, the more space it has. So that's, what does that mean? It means that slash eight is bigger than slash 16. Slash 16 is bigger than slash 32. And slash 32 is bigger than slash 64. You understand know I me? Mean? So if you have a, a, a VPC, like what you're going to do now, Type 10, write 10.0.0. 10 you see that, that number you see there, just complete it. Dot zero, dot zero, dot zero, slash 24. It means that this is the IP address that you have here, which is 10, which is very big. So you are dividing it into 24. So if you have divided this into 30, I always recommend divide it into 16. Put it in, put 16, don't put 24 there. Good. So it's still very big. So because that network number is very big, you cannot start taking from it and be putting it in your subnet. So let's call it no IPv6. Now, now it's telling you what are the part. Hold on. When I was doing my certification, then the two we have is just IPv4 and IPv6. Now they have two. Now we have IPAM. I'm going to read about that. I don't know what IPAM is. I'm going to read about it. Then we have Amazon provided IPv6. The same, I understand IPv6. So there are different versions of IPv6 now. Now we already put IPv4, which is okay. No, don't put IPv6. You don't need it now. But I want to tell you when you need it. So now go down. Now it's telling you, since you are you are renting this network. Which type of tenancy do you want to rent? Use the default, but scroll that tenancy, scroll it down. So tenancy means I want to rent this place. Default is actually people using the same network, but we are sharing it, it's shared. But if you say dedicated, you are saying this side that note, I don't want anybody to share it with me. There are some legacy application that you need to make it dedicated so that people cannot easily bring, uh, cannot easily uh, hack it. Although no, no one can hack it, it's difficult to hack. You know, some people will just want to have their own private stuff, like stay in a private plane, a private uh, part in the plane. Everybody see they go the same way when they go, you understand? But you just want to have that luxury. But for now, use default. Now, tag, tag is, you know, like it's like you are tying something around that network. So that in case you want to search it, if you cannot remember the name, you can remember what you used to tie tie it. You understand me? That's tagging. Tag is okay. Then you create VPC. Create. Okay, now you've created the VPC. Now that VPC is does not sorry, have a sorry, Patrick. There's no you didn't add name to the to the this thing before creating. Yes, she did. And there's a space say she had name. She called it say, VPC. Okay. Yeah, Grace, but there was can you can yeah. you minimize can you minimize, minimize the participant? Um, I think he's talking about the tag. Yeah, yeah under the tag, uh, there's a place you see name. Then before the value, the value that is the option of where the GJB, where you type the initial name, you type before where it appeared. Okay. Thanks, Grace. Okay, now you've created your VPC. Now what you now need to create, you now have to create your subnet, meaning you're going to divide that VPC into different AZ availability zone. So that is your VPC you created now. If you look at on top of your system, you see N vag vagina. Is it vagina? No, no. Is it vagina or vagina? I don't know again. Uh, well, not not vagina. <laughs> yeah. 
Virginia. Okay, Virginia. Okay. Virginia. 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 Beautiful. Americanas, thank you. It's Virginia. Virginia, beautiful. Toss it, bring it down, scroll it down. I understand it. Actually, it's Virginia, but I just want us to understand this region. You can see there are so many regions. This VPC you created is only for this region. You see, all that we have Ohio, we have uh, California, we have Oregon. Then we have Cape Town, we have Asia. So you can see, you can assess global data centers from just from your local system, from your home. That is the powerful thing about public cloud. You understand me? So now you've already created your VPC in this region. So if you go to another region, you can try it. You discover that that your VPC will not be there. Because VPC is region based. Now let's go to your subnet. You see under your, your VPC, you see under you see subnet, Abby. Click it. No, to the extreme. Where is subnet? To the extreme left. To the left. Oh, okay. When you click your subnet, there's a default. These ones are default subnets. But if you look at the VPC name, it's not tied to your own VPC name. See the aside or not. In a production environment, you are supposed to delete every default VPC and every default application, every default uh, VPC and default subnet. That is the best standard, best practice. You delete everything, you create your own afresh. You're not even supposed to create it using the console. You use, you use a code called infrastructure as a code, which is Terraform. And we're going to be talking about that later too. So now let's go into this place. But if you cannot create it through the console, you will not be able to create it through Terraform because you will not even know what you are doing. So now let's go to subnet. You have to create, let's create a subnet now. So that uh, talk, please remove this thing, remove it from your screen. So that I can see what you are doing. Yes. Push it up. Are we deleting the, the default subnets? You can you are, you are supposed to delete it. Best practice. But leave it for now. There's something I want to do. Please just drag yeah. the talking, drag the icon for for yeah. zoom. Drag it from there. Beautiful. Yeah. You can see create right. subnets. Yeah. Click it. So it's going to ask you, what's the name of you? Which VPC do you want to create it on? Because subnet must be tied to a VPC. So tie it to that your GVPC you created now. G, yes, beautiful. Now, I want to divide this, this side up. Divide it by 24. So go down. You can see temp.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 you must divide it to by 24, but you must end with 24. Scroll up. By 24 or by 16? This is already 16, Abby. You can yes, yeah. 16. 16 is big. That is for the VPC. For your subnet, you'll be using 24. So go to 10.0, 10, 10 put in subnet, say G, G subnet, in the name G subnet. Then the CIDR, the availability zone. Remember, see now, this is where you now select the area that you plan to put your resources. No, go to availability zone. No, no, not to click that yet. Click the availability zone. Which uh, select the one you want to. You can see these are the availability zone. These are the, the, the different region uh, zone that your the data center is. So you have to select one. So when you, when you select this, US is 1A, that zone is where this subnet will be sending traffic to. So you got to give it the side note, give it the side note. Since you're already using 10.0, you're also going to use 10.0 so that it can rhyme. So type it 10.0. Type 10.0, it will not work. Okay. 
10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 1 you can even use dot 0 again to work slash 24 for now 8 is bigger than 16 you understand me uh, 16 is bigger than 24 24 is bigger than 32 32 is bigger than 64 so we are using 24 because the same you are still in the same 10 dot 0 are you getting me so and you are attaching it to that VPC you is still going you you're still going to have more subdef to to build up from this so target you know, okay go down and, and create okay Patrick this is similar to the question that was asked earlier that uh, we didn't provide any name are you saying that it doesn't matter you already created a name a tag a oh, tag okay. a tag is the a tag, tag uh, yeah it's the tag. You're already giving it a name. The name of the tag is G subnet. So you can add another okay. subnet. You can add one more. Add one to it, one more to it. Now give it another name. Call it G subnet two. Now we can put that subnet in another region. Good. Then scroll down, give it a side add note 10.0. Dot dot one, one, no, one, one, who one? No, I'll send you a document so you understand this thing better. No, 10.0.1.0 yeah. dot dot slash 24. Dot zero slash twenty four. So in in when when allocating a cider node, uh -huh, this last one belongs to the network. So this is where the subnet is going to take its own route from. If you put ten dot one, you are already talking about different network. So for your subnet, you are going to be working only in this middle. You can change it to one, two, three, four, five. And if your subnet is already 24, ensure that all subnets are 24 so that they can communicate. These are the protocol we are talking about. These are the laws that binds it. So create. Create. So you now have two subnets. Now, let's, let, I remember I told you that the VPC must have an internet gateway before you can either tell either of the subnet to use that gateway. So now let's create an internet gateway. Right now, you have a VPC, a virtual private network, which is the network to your resources that you want to do. Now you also have a subnet. But the truth is that that subnet cannot go to the internet. No, internet can go to it because why? It's closed, it's private. You understand me? So because we know that we're going to be using, we want some internet to access it, or we want it to go to the internet and download updates. So we need to attach an internet gateway to the VPC. So go to internet gateway. You can see internet gateway on that. Create one. There's one that comes with it. That one is for public. Leave that one. Create another one, fresh one. Call it G G dash IGW. IGW means Internet Gateway. Then scroll down. Create. I do that. Now you have an internet gateway. Wait, did you attach it to that VPC? It has not yet been attached to VPC yes. yet. Okay, don't worry. Go to action. Go to action. Attach to that VPC that you created, which is GVPC. And then you create your attach. Now, that network you created, V 
virtual special private network now have an internet gateway. And that virtual private network have two VPs, two subnets. Those subnets are private, right? Let's make one public. Let's make one private. How do you make a subnet private? You attach an internet gateway directly to the routes table. So which means we need to create a route table, right? To madam. So look at the two subnets. Go to the subnet you created. Go to subnet. Okay, now if you look at the, we have so many subnets, but I mean, these are the two subnets that you created. But if we, for we to know the one that will be public and the one that will be private, you have to rename it. Let's name one public so that we can actually make that public. Let's name the other one private so that it can be easy. That's why naming convention is another way, it's another part, it's part of DevOps methodology. You must know how to name your resources so that you don't confuse the people. And you must have a place where you write all those things put, all those things that if you are not available, somebody that wants to see your resources can relate and read. You understand? So that will be documentation we'll talk about our later. Now change that subnet one. Let's make that one public. Click it, click that subnet one. I change it to public. Yes, click, 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 click that name, that name there. Just click the name there. Yeah, click it. Mm -hmm. Yes, click it. Just add, just add, no. Just say G subnet dash public. Beautiful, save. So that the other one is, is already automatically private, you understand? So that G subnet, click that subnet ID. Notice, despite they have a CIDAR name, but all of them have a unique identifier. You can see the subnet, all of them have different name. Are we right? They have different ID. She, right? So what I'm yeah. going to say is that most times when you want to when you want to request or look out for a, a subnet, you don't ask, you don't identify subnet by their name. You identify subnet by their ID. So this unique identifier, which is their subnet ID, is what makes this subnet unique. Is what makes it really um, that that give it that foot that blueprint. You understand? So take note of this uh, side. Click that subnet ID of that particular subnet. So this is the property of the subnet. So scroll down. You see a route table, right? See network access list, ACL. You see the route table, scroll. If you click that route table, click the route table. Remember I told you a route table is where you define how people can connect to your resources or how the resources can connect to other resources. So you, you have to give it a gate. You have to open it so that people can, can go to each other. So edit route tables as a simple. No, click that route table. Have we, have we clicked the route table? I've already clicked the edit route table association. Okay, edit route table. No, not that route table. Just click the route table. You are not changing the route table name. Okay, scroll down. Scroll oh. down. Scroll down. You, there's no how you can do. There's nothing. Just click that route table. Don't click it. Just click the route table. Let's attach Ethernet gateway to it since we already call it a public route table. Click the route table. Click that route table ID. Click it. Yes. Now good. Have you clicked the route table ID? So see route. Yes. Route under. 
the route. Click that route. Good. Scroll down. Scroll up. Scroll up. I'm supposed to be able to edit route. Click the route. Good. See, edit route. If you click edit route, this is where you now have to start defining. Now, you see the beginning. Say he has a private local. Local means private. Now, hard route. So you are now opening doors now for things to enter. Search for <laughs> that target. Search for Internet Gateway, IGW. On that target. Mm -hmm. You see Internet Gateway there, right? Yeah. yeah. Select it. Now, even you see the Internet Gateway, you select. See that Internet Gateway you created? See, that is what you are attaching now. Now, the destination put zero dot zero everywhere. Let it come from everywhere. So click that destination. See that destination. Click it at the beginning. Scroll down. Scroll down. Where really that you see that search. Click it. Okay. This zero dot zero dot zero dot zero means not that one. The first one means anywhere, zero, 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 zero means anywhere in, in, in networking it means anybody can access it. Since an internet gateway should be anywhere, then save. So automatically what you've just done now, because you have opened it for everybody to come in, is now a public property. So it's now a public subnet. Despite the still public subnet, there's still also a way you can also uh, control it. You understand? But at default now, it's a public subnet. Okay, so are you still recording? You said? Is I still recording? Yes, it's been recorded. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that, that that's the best. that's very important. <laughs> I for shout <laughs> because <laughs> if we told the recording is highly, highly essential. No one is is recorded, and uh, we have series of videos that we've already done on VPC, but I just want us to master this. I'm going to be sharing those videos with us. Now let's make the other subnet private. It's already private. You understand me? But let's try and create another gateway that can translate this public gateway so that, that any resources we put inside that subnet eh, can also have its access to the internet, but the internet cannot have access to it. So you go down, you see on that, you see, go down, you see what we call NAT gateway. Scroll. You see NAT? Click it. Now you're going to create NAT. Create, say create NAT. So which name do you want to call it? Call it G NAT. Okay, now. Scroll down. Subnet. Make that your last subnet, the other one that you created. The VPC first. Which VPC is it carrying? Did it ask you for VPC? No. Okay. Now select that one. Then public. Now allocate. Scroll down. Allocate elastic IP. Click it. There's none. You have to allocate it. You have to click that allocate. It's an action. There is no oh, elastic yeah. IP. Elastic IP, just like an internet gateway IP, just that the, it can only accept traffic in, not out, but it doesn't take a traffic in. So that the case you want to update your sources there. 
Now you've Sorry, done. Patrick. Can hear you. Patrick. I can hear you. In this particular one, are we selecting the private or the public or private. Uh, subnet? Private. Private. Uh, you are attaching okay. this to a private network. No, no, no. Don't press the letter one. It's already connectivity tab is public. Click. Yes. But it's public, but it's still private, meaning the resources inside can only go to the internet and move files in for update. But people cannot connect to it directly. So it's like it's going to be masquerading. It's going to be a masquerading, you understand me? So click create. Good. Now you have created a public subnet, you have created a private subnet. Now you have attached a NAT gateway to your private subnet so that your private subnet can go to the internet. Now you have set up your network. What you now need to do now Sorry, is what did you put? What did you put in the elastic IP allocation? When you click allocate- It's automatically brought something. Yes. Nothing was brought here. No, you have to click on the allocate. The allocate will allocate okay. the those figures. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Now we are good to go. Now, what we have succeeded in doing now, stop sharing. So, how do you do now, Grace? Yeah, yeah. it's it's interesting. <laughs> If you have to do it, you will be able to do it now. For sure, I should. Because you practice. You understand me? Because you practice, you will not forget. So now let's have Elizabeth. Elizabeth, hope you have been doing what she has been doing, you know. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I have 2,000 USD. Please send your account number. This lady, she's she. she. <laughs> Elizabeth, I know, I know. Maybe you, you are busy, with you, but please, can you just say hi? Hello, are you there? Are you there? Don't keep the baby is crying. The baby is crying. She went to attend to the baby. The baby is crying. I'm going to say to the baby. The <laughs> baby is asking for what? Please, when your baby stop crying, please come and continue because your baby needs plenty of money to take care of her. Okay. okay, now let's go to who? Uh, so, ah, you say people ask is just panting. Don't call me, don't call me, don't call me. We must practice. I don't want to call people that I know that can do this thing. I want people that I feel we will need to strengthen. First us, Ekwogu. I know you are good though, but I'm not you not I'm not you not talked since we've been practicing. Are you there? Yeah, talking. I'm here. You're not talking now. Anybody that is not talking now, after 20 minutes, I'll just remove I, I'm here. I'm here. Share your screen, please. Okay. I'm trying to log in. It's asking me for um twelve digit account. I don't, I don't know what. That is. You've no, you've not been practicing doing all those things since. No. Why? Please, Toby, help him out. Uh, not trying to create anyway. Toby, please help him out. I will come back to you first. Us. I just created. Okay. I'll come back to you first. Us. Toby, please help him out. Um, let me call Adeniro. Please share your screen. Adeniro, are you there? Beautiful. So let's continue from where she stopped. Hello, can you see my screen? Uh, it's kind of loading right now. Mm. Are you sure you logged in with the right with the right uh, account? With the right um, Linus uh, account? Yeah. Have you shared screen before? 
we've been having a problem with um, the zoom on the on the laptop but have you shared screen? Screen? I have shared screen on my other system but not with this system Where's the system now? Can you log in and just continue to join us? I'm waiting for you for the next uh, 15, 10 minutes. Please, we are going to come. Mm -hmm. we'll Patrick, come. I'm having this same challenge. Though. This sharing of screen with my line of I'm having the same challenge. This is what you do. Log out from your line of Before you put your password, you see two options down. There's one that starts with XO. Select that one, use that one to log that, use that profile to log in. That's the only way you can share your screen. Log out from Linus, log, leave this Zoom, say log out user, log out the user. They will ask you to log in the user. Before you log in the user, are you getting me? Change the name, change the, the, the login user. You see two profile on that, just click it. You see one that will start with XO. You don't want to log in. That's the only way you can share your screen. Alice, please share your screen. Beautiful. So please maximize, maximize your screen. Okay, um, now let's, now we've already set up a network and let's put server on top. Before you share, let me, just a minute, let me share my own screen for one minute. Let me tell us where we are. Just stop a little. Let me just, I just want to show us where we are, then you continue. Now, successfully, we have, we have, we have gotten to this part. We have finished this networking, right? What we want to do now is, we want to now set up our compute instance, iOS, you understand me? and build it up, right? So now let's go. Uh, okay, go ahead and share your screen again. Alice, please, let's hurry up, let's hurry up, let's do this. Okay, now go to EC2, type EC2 or drop. EC2 means Elastic Compute Cloud, uh, Elastic Cloud Compute, which is like a server, it's a VM. I'm going to explain VM in our next class. Time will not permit me to do it right now. But let's just create our first answer. Go to that search, put EC2 there. Yeah. Not there, on top, on top, on there. Click it, click it to So I'm gonna create an EC2, create EC2 instance. An instance is a portion of something. The AWS app server in their system but that server is no one full server you are using. So they, they use an application called an hypervisor. That hypervisor is a software, it's a system software that helps AWS to share server with different people. And they'll be using it as if they are using a complete server. So when they put an hypervisor on that server, what we are going to be doing now is a server that is a portion of a server. That's why it's called an instance of a server. So it's like a, uh, it's a virtual machine. Yes, it's like an instance. I will go to explain that later, but let's just create one. Go to EC2 instance, yes, click it. See launch instance. Give the instance name. Mm. 
use an advice to use lowercase for more relaxation. Okay. Hello, Patrick. It's advice to always use the lowercase across. Elizabeth, you are the one talking to me, right? Oh, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I stepped away uh, for a bit. I had to attend to my bosses, please. I got a um, T-Boss message calling me. Okay. So I'm here now. Okay, good. Have you been able to set up that network that uh, the first person set up? No. I so just logged in and... Go and set up. Go set it up. Please. Okay. Now, so the only way now, next class is going to be a breakout session. It's going to be a full lap. But before then, I'm going to share something during this week. If you're able to do it, that breakout session is going to be fun. And if we can completely do that breakout session next week, then we'll just do I, uh, PAS, then we'll start cruising. Start cruising. Right like this. So who was sharing? What happened? I'm still sharing. I, you're not seeing my screen. No, no stop sharing. What happened now? I don't know. I'm coming. Let me see. We were actually watching your screen before you click on your zoomed uh, icon. <laughs> Okay. okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Right. Yeah. Click the launch. Click that launch now. That is it to launch. Is it to now? Up. Oops. Okay. Just go to yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good. Give it a name. A is it to a dash is it to always give it give it a dash. Now, see, you can see when you click the name, it's asking you which, which type of operating system do you want to do? You can see AWS operating system is there. You can see Mac OS. You can see Ubuntu. You can see Windows. These are different operating systems. It's just like you just bought a laptop. You understand me? You can you put, a put an operating system. You know, our owner, we are all using Ubuntu. So let's use Ubuntu in this server you are creating in the cloud. Select Ubuntu. Now, it's telling you, this, it says this Ubuntu is 20, 22, 22.04. That's what we are using. 22.04 is what we are using, right? Or B2004 is the same thing. Scroll down. Scroll down. Now, it's telling you which type of wait now, which type of instance. It's not telling you the processor now. So we are using family uh, T2 micro, uh, which is one gig CPU, one, one gig uh, gigahertz processor speed, one gig RAM, you understand me? And it's, it's using, this is the money is going to be going to be charged, 0 0.0116 per hour and on demand. But because it's part of free tier, meaning if you are using this thing for 700 hours, for 700 minutes, 700 hours, if you are using it for 700 hours, I'll be almost 700 hours, seven minutes. The recording okay. has stopped. This meeting is being recorded. So just, so just type the name of the key here from here. No. <laughs> Create new key pair. Create new key pair. No, that's at the right hand side. Yeah, create new key pair. And type on any name you want to use. Okay, I will explain to you the meaning of key pair later. So just give it the key pair. Key pair is just like your SSH key. You understand me? Okay, we did SSH key, right? 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 We did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is an SSH key that you are putting inside that server. So that because without the SSH key, you will not be able to connect through to it through a CLI. So give it a name. Fast, 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 fast. Give it a name. Give it a name. Keep it.
I will talk to you something. I'm not talking, please. Mute. Uh, Chris, keep it. Okay. Okay. Can see it's downloading. A keeper is as downloaded. Take note of that keeper that you download. Now, uh, oh, the okay. network, now it's not telling you which network do you want this thing to sit on. So it's currently on the default network that comes with the AWS. That is not the best thing. So a did network. I see it right here. I the network you created. This one or the down one? Oh, come on, yes. That one. Then the subnet. I mean, in which region do you want to put the data center? Select subnet one, the one that has a public IP address. Public. Is that the public? Beautiful. So I get to that public part you are doing it though. Okay. So you didn't you didn't do it for me. <laughs> I created I created the two pair the one uh, with the subnet one. That's why I got stuck. So I didn't do it to the end of. Okay, stop stop sharing. Don't worry, we'll continue from you later. Thank God I you followed the video, so you know where you are missing it. Who next? Uh, let me call Claire. Claire, are you there? Claire, are you there? Elizabeth, okay, Elizabeth is not too. Okay, now we again, let's just rush this thing then. Um, Grace, continue your sharing. Grace, are you there? Let me share. I mean, okay, so we can just uh, close this. Thing. Continue now. I'm going with two. Is, the, the, is, is, is she saying anything? Is blank. Can't see anything from my screen. Yeah, she's passing through network issues. So, uh, we, um, we should, how many of us have created a network, a private and public network that is within us here? Who? I do too. Who? Who? Who is that? Let me share my screen. Right. My nice one. Talking more about it too. Let's share a screen. Yeah. Enough. Who's the TV is that loud? Please, the person should reduce it. Oh shh. People will start paying for extra. People will start paying some money. Yeah, I know. Okay, now what you do, you can change the VPC to the VPC. Put that, put it in your private, public, beautiful. Scroll down. Yeah, this is public. Yeah. Now, now a security group is a firewall. What is a firewall? A firewall is something you set at the beginning of your server. It just by the habit and gateway, you can decide to still limit. The way people can access it, the port you can open, the port to close. So I explain to you port later. Let's don't do that. So you say, well, uh, go to don't select, select as you no. Know, let's create a, a wizard now. Go to uh, Sorry, name, Patrick. Uh, are we selecting public or private for the public? It's, it's for public, for public of course. Public of course. For now, it's public, but. We we'll supposed to do private. Now go to with a security group. Give it a security group. Give it a name.
scroll down. <coughs> These are the security group, SSH, anywhere. Scroll down, scroll up. Add one more security group. So you can add there. This one? Yes, add. Under that custom, where are you there? Security group, are you there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have TCP port range, uh, custom type, type, that type, click that type, that's custom type, click it. Put, uh, make it port 80. This one, okay. 80, 80 HTTP is HT. But what? But 80, that's HTTP. This one, yeah? Yes. Okay. Okay, create. So um this yeah, storage, I, we don't have to touch it. That's our drive. That's eight gig drive. Leave it at eight gig drive. Launch right, the launch. One. No, oh shit. No. I didn't even go through. It's good. The cider block for now. Put zero dot zero 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 everywhere for now. This is where you specify your 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 VPN IP address if you are using VPN. Scroll down. Add allocate public IP. It's there. Mm. Is, huh? Scroll up, you see it. Okay. Allocate public IP. You do, 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 do. A large public IP is there. I can't find anything. Scroll up. After the name, you see. After the what? The name, you see it there. Is it primary IP? <laughs> this one here. Yeah. This one. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. yes that's it. Create. Okay. Account. I should just enable it. Yes. Just enable it. Then create it. Create. Create the instance. Okay. Click that instance name. So you succeeded. You launching your first hour. So congratulations for launching your first server. Now let's try and connect to it. Click it, click that server you created. It's still launching, still pending. Yeah, it's running now. Because if you click connect, if you click connect, click that connect. It's going to tell you the different way to connect to it. This is a server. Now, now you can use this server the way you want. So use that SSH client. To tell you what to, the process to follow, one is say open your SSH in your, your your terminal. So you're going to open your terminal, then you go to where you dump you see your IP at this your uh, SSH. Open your terminal, go to where that your SSH key is. Close it. Sorry, you said it's download. Open your terminal. Oh, okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, awesome, what's going on there? Hey, let's list. Now, 
Where is your public IP? You can see it's there. Now it says you should change it to 400. Sorry? Change it to 400. Change mode to 400. You know that change mode is talking about. Can you be able to change mode plus? Not change ownership, change mode. It's change mode, right? And change mode and modify mode, no, no more. Change mode. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Then uh, put 400, which is weird. Then that, that, uh, that, that's your SSH key. Tab. Good. Enter. Now, on that side, which is uh, copy the, the link. Go to the, the server, you see the link there. Go to uh, click it. Sorry, I should go to it. Eh? Click now, you already go out of the terminal. Click the, the windows. Now you say, after this is what you've done, and you change the mode to 400. Now to connect to your, use the public app, use that last one, that example, that one under, no, that one under. Oh, okay, 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 I got this. Copy ah, this what are you copying? Then... No, no, it do not work, it do not work. Go back, copy the whole entire stuff. Copy, put this in your camera. Yes. Enter. Enter. Sorry. Yes. Congratulations. You enter your first server. Does it look different from this, your laptop? Does it look different from what you are using now? Okay, the system is here. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm already in the server now. <laughs> so it's just the same thing, oh yeah, that's great. So you see the reason why we started with Linus. If you open your screen, open it very well. Patrick, can, can we repeat this step, please? We will, we will, we will. In fact, everybody is going to be doing it more and more. Clear your screen, clear your screen. Um, control L. You can see what is happening now. You are right now. You are you are connected to AWS server, so you can put your application, use it, and connect it to people to see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, let's just try something simple. Update. How do you update your server? How do you update your system? Um, so no, sudo okay. apps get. Mm -hmm. Dash dash. If you want to use apps get, you just put dash. Yes. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah. Update. Update. Enter. So is there anything different from what you have been doing since? Have you not your server? Now install NGLEX. Install what? NGLEX. NG. G I N X. Enter. Yes. 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 Clear. 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 Okay, clear. Okay. I know they play this one, not to, not to, I go, I go, see, see, go back to them. Not. Pseudo, pseudo, <laughs> see, pseudo system, pseudo service, nginx, start. Service, nginx, start. Enter. Okay, copy that public IP address. 
of the, they are public IP address of the server. We will put it on the server on the internet. Put it on the internet now. Put it on your browser. Go to your browser. Oh God, go. Go to your normal. Oh, okay. your okay. sorry, 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 sorry. Go to your normal sub browser. Just put it there. If your your security group is correct, you're supposed to have nginx loading. What do you see that? Welcome to nginx. This is your server. Copy the IP address. Give it to anybody. Everybody here. Put it in that group, that chat group. Everybody in that chat group. Yeah, I did. That chat group now. I'm not seeing it now. I don't do it. I don't do it. Did you now? Which of the chat group you put up? What about this, this? chat group? I sent it already it's to everybody. Zoom. It's on the Zoom. It's on the Zoom. It's on the Zoom. No, send it to WhatsApp. Okay, it's there. Can WhatsApp. See. Can see now. So if you anybody just click it, you see that. You are going to be yes, seeing, what's up? Seeing. Engineers, welcome to engineers. The difference between a server and your local laptop is that he created a server and everybody can access the server through the public IP. You understand me? But if I put engineers in my local system, you will not be able to access it. That's the only two different full servers. Server is also a super machine, meaning it has so many memory. Bobo to go, but the major thing is that. If I put engineers in my system, you will not be able to connect it. But if I put engineers in server, anybody can connect it. The same engineers you are seeing here, assuming you put, have any application, whether a website or everything, from the public IP address is what you see. So what we always do, we hide this public IP address with a name, maybe www.festos.com. That is called a domain name. That's what we use to hide this IP number you see now. That's how cyber works. That's how public cloud works. So imagine what you just did now. If you are going to create your server in your data center, you know how long it will take you. Now, within how many minutes now, you already have the server running. So, this is the beauty of public cloud. This is a little you into IAS. Is that okay? So, now I'm going to allow somebody else to create. From the scratch, he's telling me potential risk. Oh, potential right. risk. Potential you. risk in yeah, this I link. That's, you have to. That's that's the normal thing because it's um, it's coming from. Um, it's not um, HTTP. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, no, if you click not on HTTP. it, that is not. Go ahead, just go ahead and click on it. That is not. Is that potential risk, by the, madam? Tell us, say no, we potential risk. Say you know who's, who created. <laughs> They say this website might be trying to steal your personal yeah, information. Because because it, is, it is not HTTP. How much you get for, for that kind of thing? To the fear. <laughs> Something we will create together now. now. Yeah, you see, say, I don't put antivirus. I don't, I don't put virus there. <laughs> no, it's just for me to learn now. <laughs> So what we just did now is you just created a server. Remember, you for, don't forget, you, you first of all created your network, and you selected your OS, you selected your, your processor you want, you selected everything you want. Then after you did that, you now created your that, your, 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 your security group. Say, OK, allow port 80. Port 80 okay. is the HTTP that you are saying. You know that mean? Then you now say allow port 22. Port 22 was the SSH key we use in SSH into the server. Then you now say allow different things. When you do that, you're able to SSH it, and you go to your server up. And automatically, everybody can access your server. Any application you put in that server, everybody can see it. As simple as that. So this is all the application you are seeing, including Zoom. This is what they do. But they were so that they will not put some security layers, sort of you to access it through the public IP. 
you now assess it through a load balancer, which I was just talking about earlier, then so that it can be highly available and also be very secure. Then some of them will now have to put inside Kubernetes engine. The Kubernetes we are talking about is also put inside a server. So these are the things we are going to be doing more and more and more. So I want somebody to volunteer and create it as, as from the scratch. Yeah? From create another BPC, create a subnet, create internet gateway, or should we put it for next week? Huh? Yeah, I would suggest we put it for next week. Next week is not going to be same, same year too. Same year too. Next week is going to be group, and I'm going to be on each of your group. Yeah, we'll go and practice individually and uh, um, group 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 busy before next week. Okay. Okay. If that is the demand, so we cannot stop and stop sharing. Let me stop recording. Quick one. How do I how do I delete instance? Say for instance, I want to delete it. How go, do you delete? Go to state. Instance state. Yeah. Go to instance state. Where is okay? This one. Yeah. Oh, terminate, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Please delete right now. Or else we'll start charging you. But for now, they will not charge you, but I always recommend delete immediately. After you after you finish practicing, you delete, you clean up. Don't clean up your network, they will not collect money from your network. Apart from your but for my instance, for instance, they will collect money. But for your NAT gateway, they also collect money. But for now, it's going to be very small. It's still within your free, to, free zone. So all this, all these instances, all this, um, I should, I should, I should delete all these, delete. all these instances, right? Maybe you delete it now. All that IP address will no longer be available here. But delete it for that. Thank you, sir. I don't want anybody to collect your money. Now, next class, so, I want to okay. you how to set up your cloud watch so that they will not be collecting money anyhow. I don't want you to spend money apart from the one you have already used to register for. Demo, like you don't become DevOps engineer or DevSecOps. Oh, well, I know few ways collect my the starting point now one one sixty thousand dollars per. I can see. Go ahead. <laughs> I did. I did write with you. As in, uh, see you. <laughs> get your people in, now, in so the thing go now. Now one sixty minimum. It go so it go it go show now. Mm. So if you want to sure. one million naira, so you should be able to protect and present yourself very well. People have to follow you, which is already following you. So you have to still practice. So I yeah, love sure. this thing. I love this zeal. You see, he had anything hard here now. Is there anything go 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 very difficult thing? The ever be Cody 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 Cody? Nothing cold. If you follow it step by step, you will enjoy it. But if you jump. We, he will hit you bad. So that's just it. I think we can stop sharing the screen now. And let me take some questions. Stop sharing your screen, please. Any questions, please? Hello, Patrick. While I was trying to log in, log out and log in back, I've missed so many things. I didn't even follow up all that was going on. I will share the video. You will catch up. Wait, okay, let's see if you can share your screen now. Let's be sure so that next time you will not have that issue. Yeah, try sharing the screen. But I don't see this is having the same problem. So, uh, Patrick, uh, why you share this um, video? You. My bad though, I was supposed to remind you, we agreed that the different sections were, <clears throat> were going to be in series and then you, you are going to upload them for us so that we can have access to them uh, week by week. In series, yes, yes. I, I, I think I've not uploaded, uploaded that of yesterday, but that of the, the other week I've uploaded it, but I've not put it on my YouTube channel yet. But with the look of things, I'll have to start putting. Sorry, I've been doing heavy lifting this last week. Heavy lifting this last week. I know I wasn't even having that time to upload. But I'll create time this week since tomorrow is holiday. It's understandable. Too much money now. 
My brother, I want, I want, I'm trying, want everything, most of the things I do is to encourage others that are coming in, to encourage Nigeria that this thing is possible. But you know, before you start telling people things, you have to be there or else they will think that you are just making noise. You understand? And when people, when the company find it, find you worthy to give you a responsibility, we must work hard to tell them that they didn't do make a mistake. You understand? Those are the things. So please pardon me. And 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 oh, we'll work it out. But so far, I've been trying my best to share each of the videos so that you can quickly catch up before the comp compilation comes out. Hmm? Okay. Hello, Pato. Please, a question. Can you guys see my screen? She goes in one DK. I started sharing screen. No, you can't see. Is it visible? Can't, it's not visible. I think it's we need to have a Please don't worry. We have to, to meet reach out to Toby. Toby will help you out. Otherwise, reach out to me. You understand me? Uh, hello, Patu. Please go ahead. Okay, Patu, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Patu, please. Uh, I had a challenge when. I was trying to launch the instance, but not uh, during this class, before this class. So what happened was uh, for the private key that I generated, mm. I didn't go through the route of uh, uh, changing to 400 and uh, bringing the private key name. So what I did was uh, from the video I watched, the, there were these things they said you can download uh, putty and something so that I can convert the dot .pem to something else for you to be able to load. So I don't know if it's something that you can throw more light on. I actually want you to... Okay, uh, putty challenge. is terminal. Most people that are doing cloud training, they don't, they only tell them to use their windows. So if you are using windows, uh, window command line is more of pure share. So we may need a port party or another third party bash scripting to do that. For us, yeah, we don't want to encourage party. You know, party is very easy to do. That is just come download and the stress is too much. But I always want us to encourage us to use the terminal because in a professional environment, you don't use party. It's only one set of tribe, one set of people, which I don't want to call their name. They still use it. For us, we don't use party. We use our terminal. If you're using your MacBook, you use your MacBook terminal. If you're using your Ubuntu, use Ubuntu terminal. That is the culture I want us to engage and invite. You understand me? So that when you join your company, when you say open your terminal, you open it, you start, they will see you like somebody that will be doing it. You understand me? But if you say party, they will all know that you just started. It's not that party is small, no. You can use party for heavy things, but your terminal is more professional enough to use. Is that okay? Okay, Patrick, so if I get you, what you're saying is if I'm using the, the Ubuntu terminal, I don't need to go through that route. No, you don't need to go through that. Okay, you see that they do not go through the route now, did it work? It worked, Navi. Right? Yes, yes, thank you. And in fact, I started with party when I started my training then, but I got to a point, it was an interview I went to, I was telling them, please let me just log into my party. They, that was all, they just closed my terminals, so I should not worry that they will get back to me. That was it, it was like film. Somebody now told me that because they know that they will actually believe in me. But I now told them I want to use party. So this guy don't know what he's doing. Never I won't start. You start. So you want to use party? Where yeah. baby they use? <laughs> this guy. We don't need your service. Yeah. <laughs> it was embarrassing. No. They say this one still now, baby is still bill. <laughs> now baby is going to be oh, we won't use potty. I beg. So yes, my girls have mercy. Now that pot, pot 80, pot 60, pot UDP, 
go and read it. Don't just feel because you've created one instance, you are a guru. Enjoy that success, but don't allow it to last. Don't allow it to take the whole day. That success, because one of the things that distress some people learning is that when you just get one sweet success like this, you just say, I don't do, I don't do, I don't do. You now spend one week celebrating what a China is even doing in two weeks, in five, five, five days. You just but you'll be happy that you are doing it until you now go for interview. You see one seven years old or 10 years. It's not telling you things that you, you just you just be amazed. So try celebrate the success. Good, we did a very good success. However, move past and try. And please let me stop recording. Have I stopped recording?